a guy called Robert Van der Hoek. Mm -hmm. This was 1974. What? Yeah. Um, he was a uh, big popcorn DJ. Big popcorn DJ. Uh, very, very intelligent guy. And he would send me a little once list with Susan Singer on it and things like that. And uh, uh, popcorn encompassed a lot of different sounds. It's yes, it ska, did. Yeah. Um, blues. Uh, R and B, just everything, but it always had this cha cha feel. Yeah, because of the dancing, it's, it's yeah. almost got well, that kind of. It's it's slower. Have you been? To, have you been to a pop club? No, but I've watched videos online, very much like I did when well, I was getting into Northern Ireland. Let me tell the pop club club I went to was in Ghent, and he, <clears throat> because I was British, he took me out for beers, now Belgian beers. <laughs> he took me to this bar, and he says. That one there is the darkest beer you can possibly drink, and that one there is the lightest. And then there's like just it went in like a, a colour code all the way down the bar. So we did what we could, and uh, we had a really good night. We, we got pretty drunk, and then we went to this popcorn club. I'd never seen anything like it. There was no bar in it. There's just girls with holsters with okay, beers yeah, yeah, hanging yeah. off them, and you would pay the girl for a beer. And the thing that really shocked me in, in Europe was nobody says so it's... interesting. Yeah, so it's like a, like a big sort of like um, space. It was a space, that's all I can say about it, with people in it. And they were dancing on tables, they were dancing on the floor, uh, but there was no bar and it was just great. But nobody said, excuse me. You know, like in England when you go past... Have you uh, met that in Europe? Just nobody would say, excuse me, they just went past as, each as other. It, as in like I was getting annoyed. Me, as in, but sorry. it's just how it was. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, and so just like, go. Nobody said that. So everybody was like wading through each other, doing a breaststroke, <laughs> pushing each other all over the place. And I'll never forget, uh, they were dancing to these records I'd never heard, but they all had a cha cha beat and they danced with each other as well. Yeah, they, they were, were dancing couples, they were, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they were pulling each other around, which was great. So it's a little bit like uh, the shag. Yes, the, it is so. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so much. It's a little bit like the show, but anyway, the DJ then dropped SOS um, Edwin Starr. Yeah, I yeah. thought, oh, I'll have a little northern. <laughs> oh no, what they do? I've to... always wondered this because yeah. I've always wanted to go to a popcorn night, and I thought, yeah. what would happen if I danced well, by myself? They do drop northern records, but just classic records like Stop on Sight. But do you know what they do to them? They, they all, slowed them right down, don't they? Well, no. What they did with this one was uh, the people on the dance floor all got hold of each other and did like the pogo and all jumped up and down and, and just going crazy. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And they were like a football crowd. <laughs> they were like a football crowd jumping up and down to uh, stop her on site. The most amazing thing I've ever been to. But they do, they do do that to records. They, they slow them right down as well, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Because they you, I've they slow them down, they speed DJs. them up, they do all sorts of of um, conjuring to get the right sound out of the speakers and you've got to um, respect that because they were hunting for a sound oh, yeah. just like just like we were uh, just like Northern si uh, Soul Guys were uh, I think it's brilliant yeah. I, yeah. I really yeah. appreciate popcorn yeah um, so yeah you've got to go um, my, my friend that's his ambition is to go to Belgium and go to a popcorn favourite popcorn record do you want another story <laughs> <laughs> You're like this. My favourite popcorn record of all time is Sam Fletcher. I'd think it over if I was you. Which was basically a popcorn record. Yeah, it's, but it's it, northern as well, isn't it? Well, it well, wasn't then. I mean, uh, it, was, it could never be northern. I can tell you why it was never be northern. I was in Miami in uh, 76, and, and same trip that I found Larry Clinton. And I went to see a guy called Richie Uella, who was a, a Beatles collector. Mm -hmm. and he says there's a, a place just opened in town a guy, a guy's come down from Chicago and he used to run VJ Records and he's come down he's brought all three truckloads of 45s and LPs down with him three big truckloads so we go to this shop and it's the hugest shop and it's just wall to wall albums unbelievable so he says oh, all the 45s are in the back so I go into like this catacombs of little tiny rooms uh, but because he'd only just moved there, in front of the records were washing machines, um, bicycles, <laughs> buckets, mops, all sorts of shit. In some of the rooms, you could not, you could only get to the top rack because of all the stuff he chucked in. 
because he obviously moved from Chicago and didn't have anywhere to put his personal stuff. Yeah. So he couldn't even get at the records. Now today, if I came across that obstacle, I'd start at the very beginning, take all the stuff out, and uh, go back in, look at all the records, and put all the stuff back. That's what a normal person would do. But I was young, I was naive, and all I did was scramble over the washing machines and, <laughs> and everything else and start grabbing at records at the top here, you know. And I'll never forget, I pulled a load of records and, and instead of pulling a handful out, a whole shelf came crashing onto me and went rolling down and landed at Richie Uella's feet. And Richie shouts back to me, he says, do you want any of these records? I says, depends what they are. He says, uh, well, these are... VJ Beatles EP promos. So I says, no, what would I want them for? He says, okay, I, I love these then. And he picked up a great big handful of these uh, VJ Beatles EP promos. And were they valuable? Well, today uh, they're incredibly valuable. But you didn't know at the time. But that was not the only fuck up I did that day. <laughs> later, later on, when I, I, I found this wall, which was well, maybe as big as this wall here, and the same record went from the top bit all the way down to the bottom. One record, one record only. So I pulled this record out and I put it on my record player and had a listen and I thought, it's nice, I like it, but it's too slow. And put it back. And there must have been 10,000 copies. Right? And it was Sam Fletcher on Tolly. But you didn't like it at the time. No. So it, it, must, it grew on you then. Sorry? It grew on you. It's now my favourite popcorn record. It was a popcorn classic uh, it was bootlegged by uh, Bob Catania and the Stafford boys uh, changed the whole landscape of Northern Soul. Keb Dodge, uh, people like that. Um, a lot of the records came from when Levine dumped his collection. Uh, Keb Dodge was the first person to go in it but he, I'd already been through it but with Northern Soul eyes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Keb Dodge went through it with totally, totally different view. Totally yeah. different view, totally different angle. I mean, I was looking for y y y white demos on OK when I was going through Levine's collection. I wasn't looking for Sam Fletcher on Tolly. He took Sam Fletcher on Tolly to um, uh, Stafford and changed all, the whole the whole idea of Northern Soul. Yeah. I can remember receiving a, a tape um, from Butch out of that era, with all the, and, he, and he ran me up and said, did you like the stuff, though, all this new stuff we've got? I said, no. I didn't, because I still had this mindset of Northern Soul. Yeah. Jingle, yeah. jingle, bang, bang, just drop, <laughs> drop, drop yeah. you know. I, I mean, if you couldn't get a backdrop in there, it wasn't a great record. No, I, I love the yeah. mid-tempo, so... Yeah, and so they changed the whole landscape, and, and Sam Fletcher became a Northern Soul classic, but it had already been a popcorn classic. Yes, exactly. Big enough classic to get it bootlegged. Mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it was a big enough, across France and Belgium, it was a big record. And I'd left 10,000 behind. It, there's now, just so much crossover, now, isn't there? Yeah, and everything crosses over because it's all good music. I mean, even things that like these, these, these cowboy records. Yeah. With, what's it? Yeah. Uh, you know, you can imagine them sitting you know, by the campfire with their hats on and the blazing saddle type scenes, but you can dance to it. And it's great. You know, but um, it, what people would normally say, well, where did these 10,000 Sam Fletchers go to? Where did they go? Wow, yeah. ah, the northern so scene. You. No, they didn't. Um, the guy who came down from Chicago to to um, Florida, he came down for health reasons. Mm -hmm. And um, I can remember ringing Richie Uello up and saying, I was having nightmares about not doing the place properly. I was like a... <laughs> I tell you what, I was, I, I, it was like a feeding frenzy, uh, uh, just alone feeding frenzy. It was like uh, I was having a freezing, uh, feeding frenzy on my own, and I was running through the place like just chaotic, just totally chaotic. I was finding things like um, Batman at the Go Go on St Lawrence because that was distributed by VJ. And I was finding promos of it, like handfuls, just great big handfuls. So I was going mad looking for the, the these records, and if I'd been systematic and been sensible about it and got my head together. It could have been the best it that I would have over the next 30 years, but it wasn't. So I then realised when I got home what I'd done, just been an idiot. And I rang Richie Uello up and, and, and says, well, we need to get back in that place. He says, the guy's disappeared. I said, what do you mean he's disappeared? Well, he says, he hasn't disappeared. He's dead. He went and had open heart surgery and died on the operating table. 
Oh and his records disappeared. And to this day, nobody no knows, knows where they went. Gone. Nobody. Nobody knows where they went to. So it's a mystery where so 10,000... So operation yeah. and... Do you reckon, what do you think happened? Can they I, think somebody, I think somebody cleared this, uh, the place, probably kept the albums and chucked it. Because when you walked in there, uh, because there was washing machines and, and bicycles and mops and buckets, all sorts of crap in front of the records, mm. I think whoever cleared the place because he died thought it must be crap because nobody would treat it. So you records. don't think it was a record yeah. collector then? No, I, I, I think that I think may, maybe the albums because uh, the, the albums a lot of the albums were sealed. I can imagine you yeah. probably know about it if it was a record collector because yeah, no, it, it was it was a huge amount of records. Yeah, so I, I think they ended up in the dumpster. That is Which such is, a shame. Yeah, I know. Oh. But I still, if I could go back and redo what I've done, I would do it so much better. 